Welcome to the Bear Mountain, north of Zagreb. At least, this is what Wikipedia says for what the name Medvenica means. In any case, we are in Croatia with the next country guide for EA Sports WRC. Here I recommend this stage as a proving ground for tuning your setup. It is reasonably short and contains all the bits you'll encounter here. Some hairpins, some fast sections and a bunch of blind corners. This is only episode 2 of the guides. So first, let's also cover some basics of tuning. In Finland we already dove into how suspension works and for this Tarmic event we will take a look at differentials as this becomes more relevant here. The differentials, let's call them diffs for short. The diffs a rally car has are so-called limited slip diffs. If you don't know, the usual job of a diff is to allow the two wheels to rotate at different speeds while transmitting power. Because in corners your outer wheel covers more distance, so it rotates a bit more than the inner wheels. In a normal diff this can be as extreme as one wheel spinning while the other one is completely stationary. Some off-road vehicles don't have a diff at all. This is the other extreme end, so both wheels would always turn exactly at the same rate. You might want this if you cannot be sure that either wheel has grip, so one of them will deliver the force, but at the cost that you will drag one wheel if actually both of them have grip. Rally cars want the best of both these concepts. That's where the limited slip comes in. What a limited slip differential does is to limit the difference in speed the two wheels are allowed to spin at. The logic is, if you have a lot of grip and are rolling, you want all wheels to spin differently at different speeds. If you have little grip and you are sliding, you want all wheels to spin at a predictable same locked speed. There are three ways to adjust this. Acceleration lock, which is called driving lock here, the brake lock and the preload. All three do the same thing. The slider is most open to the left and most locked to the right. The diff decides which of these three sec uh, settings it uses, depending on where it feels force from. If the force comes into the diff from the engine, it uses the acceleration setting. If force comes from the wheels, it uses the braking setting. And if there is no external force coming into the differential at all from nowhere, then it uses the preload setting. How this is mechanically done varies, but it's also a detail you don't need to know for driving. If your wheels lock too much in a grippy corner, like you're going into a slide by acceleration alone, try to open the diffs more. If your car is unstable in a loose surface corner and wiggles around instead of going forward, try to lock the diffs more. Generally, you tend to have less lock in the front though, because that's where you steer, so that axle should be most capable of actually rolling along. For braking, try more lock if you lose control under braking, and try less lock if you slide straight into a tree under braking. Finally, for preload, it is subtle but lock it more if you want a better slide initiation from off-throttle weight transfers. It's basically your lock setting when you are neither braking nor accelerating. I hope this explained that the function of the setting and gives a general guideline in which directions to play around with the diffs. Now back to the bare mountain in the Balkans. Let's start with the diffs for Croatia. It is very, very smooth asphalt and it has not many corners where you could cut. 
So you also don't drift on purpose here. So this is a very open setting. Only a slight lock is applied for acceleration and braking for two reasons. If you step on the grass or it's rainy and you need to catch the car from sliding. Or if you lock up one wheel under braking to keep the car from spinning out of control. Apart from that, maximum smoothness is the name of the game here. Moving on to the suspension. Get low, get low, get low. Um, same logic. No corner cutting and smooth road. So the weight can be as close to the ground as possible. Even the springs can still be fairly soft here, as there is not much energy to soak up. The soft springs I balance out with very hard dampers to keep the car very level in cornering, but combined with a very soft fast bump setting, which applies when you hit a sudden strong shock, like if you accidentally hit a curb stone. Finally, the gears. I just adjusted the final drive a bit to the left to increase acceleration slightly. And another general thing, the hybrid setting for the Rally 1 class. I always leave it on cautious. It just affects when the force hits from boost, not, not how strong it hits. So having it only apply at 70% pedal position somewhat ensures that it hits when you enter a straight and exit the corner and not applies mid-corner while you are feathering the uh, throttle to keep control. Again as a proof of concept, now with this setup as just described, I got a time about 20 seconds behind the world record here. And I felt I had a bunch of driving mistakes, so those 20 seconds are probably to be found in the driving. I am quite happy with this setup. It feels very controllable for my driving style here in Croatia. Which brings us to the driving challenges. I said there is no drifting here. You might have wondered, but what about the hairpins? Yes, still no drifting. No handbrake. Those are tarmac hairpins. If they are not acute or wet or on ice, you do not need the handbrake. It costs you more time than driving through them smoothly. Smooth lines, smooth driving. Treat Croatia like it is a Formula One track. Listen to sharp blind corners. Some of the twos or ones can send you down the cliff if you haven't heard them. And don't touch the curb stones. This setup is aimed at maximum tarmac smoothness. So hitting a curb stone will lift your whole car up quite quickly. If you hit them just slightly, your fast bump damper can deal with it, but it still loses time. If you hit them wrong and strong, they might flip the whole car. Croatia has the smoothest tarmac in the whole game. Actually, on a very wide road. In reality, the hill climb hairpin section of this road is much more narrow. But here it has the same width as the two lane highway further along. Uh, use this to your advantage and drive like your car is a train running on rails. Be careful with copying this approach uh, to other locations. It might work for Japan and Spain because they also on average have a very smooth surface, some exceptional areas. Um, but it will certainly not be a great approach for places like Monte Carlo, Corsica or Central Europe. With such a setup your experience might be quite painful at those. They have much rougher tarmac and they have more edges and uh, pointy bits around the track. So, I hope this was helpful, not only for Rally Croatia and how to be faster here on the mountain, 
but as well for a general understanding on how differentials work and uh, tarmac rallying in general. Up next I think about Sweden for snow and probably Kenya soon for bumpy gravel. But let me know uh, also which locations you struggle the most with. I wish you an amazing day. Tranquil madness.